struggle on a nation. For as long as I can remember, my life has been intertwined with stories of mental illness. From celebrities spinning off the handle to the effects within my own family, I have always had some involvement. Because of the constant reminder of the existence of the disorders, it became a topic of interest and curiosity for me. From my view, these illnesses are nothing out of the ordinary. They were no normalized to me from a young age. My parents never carried the topic high above my head, never tried to preserve my ignorance to the world and those living around me. Instead, I was given the opportunity to learn. I was able to question and experience the lies of those who were affected. Through this, I discovered that most of the population hasn't a clue on what really goes on behind the faces of those with mental illness. When one thinks of mental illness, images of school shootings and crazed asylum patients tend to be a common first thought. Feelings of danger, insecurity, and fear are associated with the thought of those with mental illnesses. Most people tend to assume extreme psychosis when confronted with the topic, forgetting those who live with more common illnesses, such as depression and anxiety. No one considers the parent who is unable to work because of such a major depression that sleeping is the only way they find relief from their world. No one takes into account the teenager who can't get up and go to school because the notion of getting out of bed fills her with grief and anxiety. No one thinks of the child who spends most of their life in a technological world because the thought of having to interact with new people launches them into a panic attack. No one wants to acknowledge they exist. Believe it or not, 20% of adults living today have a mental disorder, meaning one in five adults living in the United States. This could be anyone, including coworkers and friends, even those within your family bear a chance at having a mental illness. Although they may have a disorder, many might not even know. The main cause of this incomprehension of one's own health is the fact that 56.5% of affected adults receive no medical treatment. Another 22.94% never have the chance to even see a doctor to learn about their mental illness due to costs. The obvious answer to the issue is to apply for medical insurance, right? It's a bit more complicated than that. Once a patient is diagnosed with a mental illness, it's 2.5 to 7 times harder to be accepted for health insurance. Even those who secure health insurance may have to face more obstacles. In the 2008 Paul Wellstone and Pete Dementi Mental Health Parity and Addiction Equity Act, an act was passed requiring equal coverage of mental and physical health costs. This includes all employer-based insurances with more than 50 employees and the Children's Health Insurance Plan, CHIP. Also included are most Medicaid programs and any insurance created under the AC ACA, otherwise known as Obamacare. If you happen to be employed with it by any government organization, such as public schools and state universities, your employer-based insurance provider is not required to follow these laws. Medicare is another exception to this law. Even those, those within the age range, 65 and plus, for Medicare are greatly affected by mental illness. Both insurance programs are allowed to raise the co-pays on mental health insurance significantly without raising the physical health co-pays equally. In 2015, it was reported that 55.2 million individuals received coverage from Medicare and another 3.1 million citizens received health care from public school insurance programs. That is over 58 million adults without guaranteed access to affordable mental health care in the United States alone. This separation between mental and physical health is a part of history that has become a key factor in the treatment of mental illness in the modern age. Mental disorders such as depression are caused by the inability for your brain to regulate and control proper distribution and absorption of serotonin in the body. In the case of diabetes, the body is unable to produce and regulate a proper amount of insulin. Where is the separation between the body being unable to regulate insulin and being unable to regulate serotonin? It is obvious that those with diabetes cannot cure themselves. They have a disease that requires years of medical help. It is impossible for them to be cured by positive thinking, getting more sunlight, or simply snapping out of it. Some with diabetes would never be blamed for their disease or expected to cure themselves. So why do we expect just that from those with depression? Both medical and non-medical health has been proven to be the best way to treat those with a mental illness. When treated by a medical professional, the patient is given the opportunity to control the illness that has thus far overpowered them through medication or therapy. As a parent, this allows them to be able to lead a better life and be a better supporter of their children. Adults are given the chance to create a life in which their illness isn't a constant factor in their pursuit of achievement. Children are able to grow and develop relationships as well as being able to better understand the world around them. It is because of the help of medical professionals that children all over the country, like myself, are able to live knowing their family as loving and caring individuals, once hidden under the blanket of mental illness. When an individual is not able to seek help because of costs, it not only limits them, but their families in extension. Untreated mental health issues 
within a household have been shown to raise the chances of childhood depression within the family substantially. Fortunately, youth health insurance is much easier to obtain than adult insurance. Even with the higher availability of youth health insurance, however, 64.1% of childhood depression in the United States is left untreated. Those affected have major issues in school and relationship development, as well as suicidal thoughts. Another major cause of childhood mental health issues is the incarceration of a parent, which in most cases leaves the child under the custody of a guardian or the state. When a child has grown up in a household with a mentally ill parent, many problems can occur. When that parent is suddenly taken away from them and incarcerated, depression is only scratching the surface on what problems may later develop. In 2014, 20% of the 2.3 million inmates in the country suffered from an untreated mental illness. Not only are mentally ill individuals more likely to be convicted, they are frequently given longer sentences due to uncontrollable behavior, a symptom of their ailment. Compared to just 40 years ago, the country as a whole has taken a step towards the end goal. Even so, there is still work to be done. The ultimate goal is to create a world in which mental illness is considered just as normal as a broken bone or concussion. To proceed, we must first solve the root of the problem. Just two generations ago, the topic of mental illness would have been shunned if brought up. Those with mental illness might have, might as well have not existed for all the medical focus they were given, with little funding and a widespread social stigma against the topic. The stigma against the existence of mental illness is the foundation of the issue today. Although we have definitely begun to push through this wall and partially succeeded, in time the wall must fall completely. Small pushes, such as protests for the equal coverage of mental and physical health, as well as new entertainment series addressing mental illnesses, for example, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, It's a Wonderful Life, Forrest Gump, Fight Club, and even Finding Nemo, are all helping to sp spread awareness to the people. It is these steps toward the ensured to solve of the issue that are most important. Although seemingly small, these steps will be the brick and mortar of building a bridge to the time in which everyone, mentally ill or not, can live the best life possible. Thank you.